Hello there. Thanks so much for stopping by. Lately, I have been obsessed with making these cute little felt bears. So I thought I would make a quick video showing you how I make them. So I use the felt from my own felt set that I sell on Amazon, but you could use anything to make these. You could use scraps of fleece from old uh, jumpers or hoodies. You could use like jeans and make like denim ones. Um, you could use uh, secondhand jumpers. Um, some fabrics might need a little bit of fray stop after you've cut the patterns out to stop it fraying but just about any fabric would look great. I had it in my head that I wanted to make a bear. So using Procreate on my iPad, I sketched out the rough idea of the bear and finished it off as an outline to make the pattern. And so this is the end result. Uh, if you want to print this out, it is on my website, studiosam.co. Uh, there's a little page on my website called freebies or no, uh, uh, free patterns. If you go to my free patterns page there, uh, you can print this out. Okay, so we have got our little pieces. I have just given a little bit of a guideline here of the of the mouth facial expression that, that I used and some rough guidelines of where I put the eyes. So the eye placement is, is really quite important to the finished expression. Um, I really like characters with wide set eyes. That's just something that I find really cute. I tend to like wide set eyes and noses that are quite... Um, like quite close up or high up in between the eyes. Um, a lower down mouth and more narrow set eyes gives him, I guess, a bit more of a um, cheekier, uh, kind of mischievous look. Whereas I think the wide set eyes um, and a higher nose or muzzle kind of gives him more of a chubbier, cuter uh, kind, of, kind of look. So you can play around with that. Um, you could do a little offset. I mean, that looks super cute as well. A little, you know, kind of confused bear uh, where it's a little bit offset. You can you can play around. I also have included the little pattern here for the knitted scarf that um, uh, I want to do around the neck. I'll move them out of the way. So this is my pack of felt. We have got 40, 40 pieces of mixed coloured felt in warm colours, cool colours and neutrals. It is not the, the paper thin type of, um, of felt, you know, where you can, you know, you can almost see through it. This is thick and soft and it holds its shape uh, really well for, for toys and, um, you know, crafts where you want something that actually has um, a softer feel to it. But today I'm thinking... I've got a thing about this mustardy yellow at the moment. I think I'm going to make a little mustard coloured bear. Like a, a creamy light brown colour for his tummy and nose. So to draw it out, uh, I, I find that a regular graphite lead pencil works best for me. I think if you were making a dark grey or a little black bear, you would probably need to use like a tailor's chalk in a light colour, like a, a white or a cream or a light pink tailor's chalk that would that would show up more on the darker colours. But for most general colours, I find that the regular lead pencil works works fine. There we go. Number one. If this was a bigger pattern uh, for something like a big letter or something where the shape was quite you know uh, quite critical and I really didn't want to get it wrong then I would pin it down okay and that's is number two and I will do the same with these ones oh now before we cut these out can we just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of my Chula Pink Scissors. Aren't they stunning? I bought these from the quilt show a couple of years ago <laughs> and I love them. I 
I have finished cutting those out and so you can see there's a couple of little smudgy marks where uh, where I was a bit kind of casual or a bit rough with the pencil so I'm just going to look at him and I'm going to choose that that is the good side and that is the good side so I can just put the lead pencil marks to the inside I'm going to do the same thing with with the tummy I can see a couple of little little pencil marks there so I'm going to put that down on the inside so we can't see them before we stitch the front and the back together I like to put on the the little nose and the tummy and the little details first I just find it easier to hold the felt and hold the needle and get the little details I want um, before he's stuffed now this is one time when I actually will pin it so I'm going to use just an everyday regular polyester thread there's nothing special about this and it's just in one of those kind of neutral neutrally tones that uh, will kind of disappear into anything I only want one strand I don't want to double it up I don't want it to be too thick because I want it to quite disappear to tie a knot in one end and using a simple everyday overhand or what is also known as a whip stitch we are going to go around this little tummy so I want the stitches to be quite small I am just catching just catching that that felt putting it in straight at the edge and catching that next little bit don't worry if you don't have a lot of experience with sewing if your stitches are a bit wonky if they're a little bit uneven it will just add to the charm of your little homemade bear you can see my stitches aren't perfect either some of them here are a little bit closer together some of them are a bit wider apart I have heard a trick that um, I saw on Pinterest somebody got a sharpie and and actually drew uh, some little marks along their thumb here in I don't know probably every two or three mils so that as the thumb goes down you can come up in the exact same space but <laughs> I haven't actually tried it myself because knowing me I'd probably smudge the sharpie onto what it was that I was stitching okay and I have come to the end there I'm just gonna take my my thread through to the wrong side and tie a quick little knot if you haven't done this before I just go through one time through a second time and it makes like a little a little loopy circle here put my thread through one time put my thread through the sec through the uh, the loop a second time give it a pull and I've got a little knot okay I am going to do her face nose and mouth in this dusty eggplant kind of color what is it it is number 29 so I am actually going to separate the, separate this uh, DMC strand out because I'm choosing quite a contrasty color I'm just going to separate it and make it a bit thinner so I'm just going to get three strands halve it and use three of them I'm not at the end and you could use our little pattern as a guide if you wanted to but I am I'm just going to kind of wing it some long and some shorter and I don't want them to be too symmetrical all over the shop I'm just doing them one at a time so that I can kind of have a look as I go a little one over here just a few extra little ones in here and there yeah I think that's cute and I'm going to knot it off the same way I'm just thinking that this little tiny small piece of felt is a little bit hard to maneuver and, and get nice neat lines I'm going to stitch this on first and then do my nose and mouth lines because I want to put a little scarf on her I don't want her mouth to be too far down because it'll be hidden so I'm going to put it almost smack bang in the middle of the head I am going to pin it same neutral colored thread 
I have a knot in the bottom and just doing the exact same little small whip stitches that we did before we are going to go around the little nose piece. Take it through to the other side, two times through your loop, pull it through to a knot. Alright, she's looking good! So you can see even mine here, it is not perfect. You can see some of the little stitches, you can see it's a little bit wonky, but I think, you know, I think it's looking real cute. I do, I do like to mark out how I am going to do this nose. I think it is hard to just to just wing this and, and get it right. So I am using just a, a felt tip hmm, kind of permanent marker pen. It's just a, it's just a cheap one, but I'm just going to mark out where I want the nose to go on here in little dots. To give me a rough indication of where I want to stitch. I don't want this to be too dark because I want to be able to cover this up entirely with my stitches. So I think the little nose should be a triangle like that. I do have my pattern here as a little guide. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to give her just a little tiny hint of a smile. To stitch this I'm going to use the other half of the DMC thread that I used uh, that I started off for the tummy. So now to sew this nose I am just using a long stitch where I come up here along my line that I've marked and just doing one long stitch up to the, the, the line at the top. So I will just keep doing that from the bottom to the top all the way over to the end. Coming up here, going down right next to that stitch at the top. One more little stitch here at the end. And now because that top line looks a little bit wonky, it kind of goes down in a bit of a dip at the middle there. I can just neaten that up with a little back stitch across the top. That looks better. And maybe one more back stitch. Just to even up that last little section. Okay, I'm happy with that little top nose. Now we're going to do a back stitch down here and finishing off the smile. So a back stitch is where you come up a little bit further than what you want and you bring the stitch or you bring the thread outside along the top backwards. So I'm going to come up where I want it to go and then back into where we started. So we've got the little straight line. Now I'm going to come up where I want the thread to go and back in to where we started. And coming along this way. I think one more to make it a little bit uneven on this side so that the mouth goes a bit longer on this side. Come up where I want it to go and back in to where we started. Happy. I think that's really cute. Let's knot that off. Okay, it is time to do her eyes. Now I am going to use just little French knots for the eyes because I just feel like her expression just needs little eyes that are quite wide apart and low down. And I just think little small French knots would be um, a good fit for that. Um, there, you know, you could also um, 
cut out little circles of black felt and stitch those on if you wanted. You could use um, beads, little pony beads or um, perla beads or some other little jewellery beads that you had. You could stitch on those. Um, you could also use safety eyes, the black little plastic safety eyes um, designed for toys, which are... Um, are quite easy to do you just poke them through and secure them from the back uh, so depending on uh, you know what you're going to use this for this is just as a decoration for me and for my girls that are quite um, that that aren't infants so I'm happy just to um, to stitch on little eyes uh, if you're going to give this to a, a baby of course just don't use external beads that can come off easily use proper safety eyes so to do uh, French knots uh, are really quite easy. I have just used my my sewing needle and um, just to, to mark out the expression, um, I've played around with a few positions and these little, I've just made some little marks here with my needle of where I'm gonna do the eyes. So um, I'm gonna make the eyes in line with the top of the muzzle and halfway between the muzzle and the edge. Coming up from the bottom I'm going to hold my needle this way, wrap once, wrap twice, and then carefully putting the needle back down really close to where we came up. You, you want to make sure that this thread here uh, is, um, has some tension on it just so it's not flapping around, but you don't want to pull it too tight otherwise it's too hard to get this needle back through your wraps. Gently give it a wriggle, pull the needle through, and we have one little French knot. One more on this side, coming up where I can see my mark. Wrap once, wrap twice, back in really close to where we came up, and back down. Ha <laughs> ha Cute! So, oh, so before I forget, uh, to do those, I used the, the same purplish uh, DMC thread, but I didn't separate it out at all. I used it in its full thickness with all six strands to make sure that the eyes had enough, uh, had enough thread in them to actually stand out. So all we've got to do now is stitch the front and the back together. So for that, I am just going to use this. Uh, it's actually a cotton Gudeman thread. Uh, I could use a polyester thread or a cotton thread. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I'm using the cotton thread just because it's, it's, it's all I've got, um, which is just such a good match in the color. I'm just double checking that I have the one with some visible pencil marks on the inside so that they can disappear. I find it easier to stitch up a stuffing gap if it's on a straight area. So I'm going to start about here, stitch all the way around and stop just under the armhole here so that I can stuff through a little hole here and it's on a flat section so it's easy to stitch back up again when we're done. So I've just put the, the thread on the inside there so the knot disappears and using our little tiny overhand stitches we are going to have some fun make a cup of tea put the radio on and stitch your little bear together So I'm halfway around and I was just going to share something in case you've done the same thing. I probably cut out this pattern and you know I was a bit casual, things could have gone a little bit wonky and maybe your front and your back don't meet up perfectly in some areas. Um, you can see here, I don't know, something went a bit strange here when I was cutting this ear and it's gone down a little bit straight here and it's not quite as round as the bottom one. But I just wanted to tell you, don't be discouraged by that. It really doesn't matter. Manipulate the felt, push it into place as you go, and don't get too bogged down or worried if things you know, weren't cut perfectly and they're not a perfect match. This side here, what was I thinking there? I don't know what's gone. If I get this edge to meet and the little arm to meet, things definitely weren't straight and perfect there when I cut that pattern and it doesn't matter at all I'm just going to make those edges meet when I get to it and it'll all be fine you will never know at the end so I have now finished 
all the stitching around the outside. So I've stopped here underneath the arm and I've got about, uh, about an inch, inch and a half of gap here where we are going to fill it. So using everyday stuffing or uh, what do they call it, polyester fibre fill, uh, I'm going to stuff her now. So little, I find little bits at a time, if you use, you know, a big chunk like that whole section, it ends up kind of forming a bit of a bottleneck and it's hard to get in. So what I'm going to do is just start with little bits, poke it in, and then I'm going to use a chopstick to push it up. And I'm going to start up here in her ears and work my way down. Now there's no magic uh, formula for exactly how much stuffing you should you should you know you should put into a, a little toy like this. If you overstuff, then they're not quite soft and squishy. And if you understuff, well, you know, as the days and weeks go on, this fiber fill does compress a bit. So heads and necks um, and arms and areas where there a natural fold tends to occur, they tend to just go a bit floppy. I'm thinking that head is pretty much done. I've got a good amount of uh, squishability. That is the, the technically correct term. Not too hard, not too soft. Just right. Did you see what I did there? My little bear pun. Oh, and she's coming to life. Ah, that's so stinking cute. Now I can just see that that neck needs a little bit more. Just got a little bit of floppiness there. I'm just going to put a bit more support in around there. Okay. I'm happy with that. That all feels good. So now we just have to do this little area around where our stitching hole is. So it can be a little bit tricky. I'm going to want to fill that leg. There is a lot of pressure there and I can feel like if I let that seam go, it kind of will go open up and uh, her insides will come out. But uh, I kind of want that because then after if I put some pressure on it and hold it together tight while I stitch it closed, then when I let it go, I know it'll be it'll be nice and properly stuffed. So we've still got our thread here. Oh, it's gone into her body. I'm going to re-thread it, squishing that seam closed under pressure, using those two fingers here to squish it closed. Push that filling in as you need. There's a little bit of stuffing still coming out. Let's give that a little squish in there. And I've come to the end. So here at the end, we're going to make our little knot the same as we do all the other times. So we make a loop once through twice through, pull it tight. Now we don't want to leave this just this thread just hanging on the outside here. So what you can do, just go straight through to another side. Give it a little pull so that the knot kind of disappears into the seam there. And then if we trim it off here, then that thread's disappeared and we can no longer see the knot. <laughs> oh, she is so cute. <laughs> Yay! Okay, we are almost done. She really does need a little scarf. And I've just got a thing about pink and yellow together, so I'm going to do some kind of uh, you know, a, a deep raspberry or plummy pink to go with her. But you could use whatever you wanted to add little accessories. You could cut up a little piece of scrap fabric, like a little bandana style, and tie that here with a knot. You could do a little bit of finger knitting and just... Um, and make a long chain and just loop that around a few times. That would look so cute. 
You could use any kind of little fabric scraps you've got lying around. So I'm going to whip up a quick little scarf now. I will show you how I do it and then we'll add it on. So I'm going to use uh, this uh, like deep raspberry colour which is just a an eight ply uh, number four regular uh, acrylic yarn and I've got the the little simple pattern that I'm that I'm using on the printout here if you wanted to follow along so using this acrylic yarn and four millimeter needles I'm going to cast on seven stitches and then knitting regular regular knitting in a standard no not stocking stitch what do you call it in a standard garter stitch everyday garter stitch which is just you know the, the plain every row every row I'm going to do that for 75 rows it might sound like a lot but that will go quite quickly if you put the radio on put on your audiobook and make a cup of tea if it's not exact it honestly it's not going to matter it's just for a little stuffy so it doesn't have to be uh, exact you know you try to keep rough count of it as you go but if you go a couple over or a couple under it's not going to make any difference at all all right that is done that is done i'm just going to cast that off now and weave in the ends I could kind of stitch it like that or I could make it go a little bit tighter and go all the way around I think I kind of like it like this I'm just going to add a couple of little stitches just to hold it there in fact I've got a better idea a little button sewn on there would be even cuter let's see what I've got so I just went and had a look in my button jar and I've just found a cute little plain shimmery button and I'm going to stitch that on there I'm not going to stitch it through to the bare because I like the idea of this accessory being um, removable so I've just got a rough idea what that was I'm going to tighten it up a little bit and I'm going to stitch that on I have got a little piece of pink thread here yep that'll be good okay come on let's pop it on <laughs> oh she's adorable okay all right so she is done so here I was just going to brainstorm some of my other ideas with you so you can see what else uh, that you could do uh, so I, I, I'm going to leave her like that because I think that's just lovely but if you you know you really wanted to get creative there is so much that you could do you could use some of that chenille yarn you know the chenille knitting yarn that's kind of all fuzzy and fluffy to do some of these little bear stitches you could go to town with that yarn and make her have little fuzzy chenille stitches all over her or if you wanted to get a bit more clever with embroidery you could do some little little um, lines for ears with some embroidery thread here you could embroider little flowers on her back um, I was even thinking about getting some blush and adding some little pink circles here just to add a little bit of detail um, on her face which I think would be really cute uh, you could uh, increase her um, her expression a little bit more with some like little angled uh, eyebrows up here if you want to be creative and add some more uh, little elements to these bears you could really uh, go to town and create something incredible but I did want to show you uh, something else um, my other one that I made so I made this one last week and this is a little gray version so exactly the same pattern uh, for some reason he looks smaller uh, but it is exactly the same pattern maybe I um I don't know maybe when the printer when it when it printed out it wasn't at 100 percent or something uh, but uh, so this is her little friend stormy bear and so I'm going to call this one little sunshine bear and uh, so the difference here with the eyes so we used the 
the uh, the French knots for the eye on sunshine and I have got the plastic safety eyes uh, for Stormy Bear here and I did have um, a little scarf knitted for him in the mustard yellow but I just thought um, that he looked really cute with just a little bit of scrap fabric as a as a little bandana scarf but the other thing you know you might be thinking you know that they're really cute but what on earth would you use these for well I was going to share some of you know things that I have thought about out with these um, there there are so many different things that you can use little toys like this for of course the obvious one you know is to give them to the little people in your life uh, who would who would play with these and um, and, and carry them around you could make uh, a little set of these and hang them from from ribbon and make a mobile in in a baby's room I think that would be really cute um, you could um, if you were feeling brutal you know you could stab them with pins and turn them into a pin cushion that would be perfect for that uh, you could um, fill them with lavender and use them as a lovely smelly drawer a little drawer smelly thing in your sock drawer uh, to make your socks smell nice um, you could um, you could make them in bright colors and hang them for Christmas decorations I think that would be such a cute little present uh, especially if you wanted to learn some new embroidery stitches and do little lazy daisy embroidery stitches all over them in bright Christmas metallic threads I think they would look they would look so cute uh, another thought that I had is they would be a great little memory bear um, for kids groups or um, you know if you're your church group or your scout group uh, I was thinking that um, you know you could use a, a little bandana like this and um, you could embroider your cub camp 2021 along here as a little memory as a little memory bear or if you if you weren't confident with embroidery you could use a little iron-on a little iron-on sticker or iron-on patch to do that uh, so anyway that is it for me today I have talked long enough and um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my, my cute little project that I've been making um, if you've got any questions at all um, write them down in the description I read every single question um, and if you do make these if you make any of these at all any different types tag me on Instagram because I would love to see that that would be that would make my day all of the supplies and equipment that I have used in these I will put links down to them in the description below uh, and I will also have the link there to the pattern on my website that you can print off and use for your pleasure and stitching enjoyment okay my friends I will see you next time thanks for watching bye